This tree right here almost died in 2012. Uh, and you can see it's stressing. For some reason, this tree is not doing as good as it should. You see how the leaves are curling when others aren't doing it? So there must be a pancake under this one, a big rock. Whenever you have something like that and the root can't get around it, it will limit what it will do. This tree is real neat. This came from uh, Oklahoma, uh, right by Cherokee lands. So this is just different genetics mixing in with it. But you can look at that tree and that one and this one. And so this one's having some struggles. I planted them before and have them get up this tall and die. And then replant them again, they get up that tall and die. Then then start driving uh, rebar down and you, you can feel something shake real big and it's like a big pancake of rock. Then you can move over maybe three feet and replant it and then they'll take right off though. So sometimes that's what you're doing with this too. And uh, this tree right here has grown really, really well. In fact, it was planted after this one was planted. But look how tall it's grown right here. And uh, that is from, that tree there is yeah, seedling or seed from the Grand National Champion here in Missouri, about 23 inches at the base of it. Wow. This little raised place we see right here, Yeah. Um, I picked this out on purpose because it faces southeast, opposite of the direction of tornadoes, and it's well drained, so we're gonna build a log cabin. I've already talked to these Amish people, you know, I told you down at yeah. Montauk, they can already build a cabin for us, prefab and ready to drop in here. But it's really important, though, to be able to let other people come here and learn from this. And so I've already got the plans made up. It's all, nothing has to have electric. It'll run off a generator or be solar, the whole thing, though. So, yeah, we'll be doing that at some point. Are too. you doing what? Do what now? You Putting in a log cabin. Log cabin oh, right cool. up here, yeah. I wrote that in the plans back in 2008 for that. So, oh, so I've got a campsite right up there. Yeah. <laughs> already got great. firewood there already in a ring, so it's a start. Yeah. <laughs> now, even though we're in the valley right here, uh, this is kind of a little bit more of a raised place. And um, me and my son planted this tree uh, here, I guess that would have been, uh, let's see, in 2009. He was a real little guy. <laughs> He's 13 now. And so we plant this one, uh, the huh. one you see right here, and the one right here. Yeah. And somebody came in a four-wheeler right behind us and drove right over the other one, over the rebar and everything. <laughs> so that's when I closed everything down. That's when I went ahead and put up posted signs and took a chainsaw and dropped all the trees on the roads. But uh, look at this, though. This tree was planted in 2009, and it's kind of starving for sunlight. We dropped trees this last winter right behind us here, which helped out a lot. But this tree made pollen this year, but no nuts yet. And this was planted one year before what you saw on top of the hill. So, you know, getting it in optimum conditions makes a big difference on it, though. But no nuts on it, though. Yeah, I imagine this is... The other trees are blocking all yeah, of the Yeah, sure place. enough. And, like, see this direction over here, you're looking at... Uh, I guess that would be... That's east over here, mm -hmm. west back over here in this direction. I'm sorry, east back over here. It was the one to put the bag on that with this pollen from this tree to that one. And so we made a new one, a 68X is what that one is. So, and right here it is. Uh, it grew outside the tube. I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> so it should be inside the tube. And I can't believe a deer didn't eat that. But, uh, so that's what it's all about. So this tree right here was planted this year. And I planted that one April 14th, 2015. Mm -hmm. See that times two? That means I actually put two seed in there. Because I was afraid that, um, that's a weed there. Because I was afraid that... One of them may not make it, so it's a good thing I did. So I've got one tree. And I already pulled the screen wire up off of it. But this tree right here, though, kind of like that one you saw over here, when it makes nuts here and it starts pollinating with these other cross trees, you know, we're going to have the best genetics on planet Earth. We've already got them. And so the seed that we take from that, like the, those 500, we're going to plant on that property over there. I'm going to have to get some more land over here. You know what I'm saying? When did you start? Working with the chestnuts. Uh, let's see. In 2006, I first started getting interested in it because nobody else was doing it. And and in 19, uh, I guess it was 88 or 89, I came that close to join the American Chestnut Foundation. Then right below us, where you got your vehicle parked at, there's a guy by the name of Harold Adams up there. He started telling me about this tree. And this guy is one of the smartest woodsmen I've ever met. He, he'll be 96 this year. He mm -hmm. was telling me about this tree that grew over the Ozarks. And he called them chinky pins. And I thought, oh, he's talking about American chestnut. And I realized he was born in North Arkansas, though. 
And so one thing led to another, and he said, nope, they're all gone. Nobody's ever heard of them. So that's kind of what got me inspired yeah. about this. So I started looking up, and one thing led to another. There's almost nothing online, nothing in books. And so by uh, 2006, though, I started saying to myself, you know, I'm going to do something about this. My wife's like, why are you doing this? And I'm like, you know, it's, it's important for our forest. You know, it's important for wildlife. So that's when I first started getting interested in it. I first started doing programs in 2001 at Lake Wapatella State yeah. Park on the tree, though, you know, public okay. programs. Like, so. And there's another cross, 24 by 46. Hey, that sounds like one of mine. Yep. I think you did that one. And the first number right here is the tree, the parent tree that you put the bag on. That's the way I got the database set up. See this right here, R3.5? The American chestnut grade a lot easier than what we do. The American Chestnut Foundation, they give a tree on a 1 to 5 rating. 1 is like most resistant, 5 is is resistant to the blight. And they give a lot of their trees a 3. In fact, if they have a tree that's over 7 inches diameter, they give it a 3 rating. We grade that a lot harder. Only give it a 7 if it's over 10 inches in uh, DBH. This one's 3.5, and if you'll see CM, that stands for Shane Matzenbacher. Uh, 24 is a tree that was done on. That's the Grand National Champion. And it was crossed with a bag of pollen from tree number 46, which came from northwest Arkansas. Oh, and that really? tree there's that tree there, I inoculated it with hypovirulence too. So it produced number 59X. That means it's a cross. So when this one gets up and they start crossing, I mean, we're just, you know, two or three years away from that right now. Well, it's it's planted, I think this was planted this year I think see and I scooted the wire back off of it you can see this one it's not quite out of the tube but if you got good uh, habitat for them um, four feet of growth is not unusual you know if you plant ten trees you might get um, half of them more or less make yeah. it to four feet that first year but you'll also out of ten there's a good chance you'll lose probably two to four mm -hmm. either by mice something will happen it won't be at the right spot. There's just a number of things. The trees at one time produced millions of seed, and now we're just working with a very few. So out of millions of them, you know, some are gonna get through. Here's one planted in 2014, and this one's not getting nearly the sun it should, and it should be a lot further along. This one's just not doing that great. Yeah, there's a good bunch of these trees could come down. No, oh, it's not. Oh, tiny See guy. that one, it's not doing that great. Could be a number of reasons. It could be it's not draining well enough. Uh, it's hard to say. That and is it's another. Obviously, shadier than what. You're it is, yeah. And see, spot. the sun comes up over here. This is, yeah. this is not the best habitat right here because it's not catching morning sun like that place is. Yeah. But we cut enough on the side right here where it kind of makes up for it. So mm -hmm. from about mid morning on, it does track the sun. But right here is the shadiest part. Even right now, you know, it's what like uh, close to three in the afternoon. We're still you know, in, in shade right here. Yeah. So that'll give you an idea. But if that one's in full sun, it'd do a lot better. Though. And when I planted this these before, some of them I was actually running out of room because we didn't have everything cleared yeah. down below this one. Yeah. That's a chinka pin right there. That'll give that one a little bit of room. But what I'm going to do this winter, I'll come back in, I'll cut another swath up through here. So beyond where Colton's at uphill, we'll probably go like 20 more yards. And then trees like this one will take off then. They'll start doing real good. And you're going to fell these trees? I hope trees. it will. You're going to fell these trees? Of so, course. So that... No. <laughs> I mean, so that... Oh, you are going to cut them down, aren't you? Like, yeah, we're going to cut them down, but no, we don't sell them. No, we no, cut them. Fell. Do what now? Fell down. Fell them, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and this tree here, I'm trying to think how old this one is, but if you'll look at the base of it right here, see that collection of leaves? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll have a huge wad of them there. You don't want them to do that. If you have that, pull it up. Sometimes through the winter, uh, for some reason, uh, mice like these, and I've seen nests in here, one of the first orders of business they do, I guess because the wind blows this thing around, they'll eventually gnaw your tree into. I've had that happen before too. So a tree you worked real hard on, they'll gnaw it. But don't fret if they do it because it'll grow about that much plus a little bit more the following year. Once they get established, these things are like bulletproof. They're really, really rugged. 
And um, speaking of rugged, look how rocky this is right here. Let's see if we got a tree in here or not. Uh huh. Who would ever think a tree would grow in a place this rocky? And let's see what we've got in here. The bugs have really, really been eating on this one pretty good. But what you want is well drained soil. So if you get a lot of leaves, collect them on top of it and you get rid of them. If you have one bit of humus, I'm going to let that one dry out a little bit. If you have one bit of humus that's actually um, on the root, it will rot it. So the peat moss, you overwinter them in, you never ever want to plant them in that. If you do, it'll it'll make the root rot. That's just for overwintering them. In fact, the reason why you blow air into it like once or twice a week is to stir that up and not let it get mold on it. Mold's enemy. And like when I gave uh, the seed like you and Ziffrey, you know, to plant in that peat moss I, I gave y'all, I put an antifungal agent in it. You know, I mix it in with water and that's what I dampen it with and it cuts down the amount of mold that you've got. Okay, we're going to go back uh, around this way. We're going to circle back through here. And we didn't see all 94 of them, but they're waiting for us downhill. So. <laughs> we see plenty. Can you plant the seeds straight into uh, like rocks, like pea gravel maybe? Yeah, something like that. Um, I mean, I know it probably needs some soil in it, but... Well, what you, what you want to do, what I found is the best stuff, if you can find uh, sandstone, mm -hmm. sandstone will get damp but not wet. It yeah. drains water off real quickly and real easily. And uh, I'm looking up here for some more tubes. Uh, you can follow me around and feel real good about your tree playing skills. Yeah. Um, about three years ago, we had 11 or 12 cross seed. I planted those, they came up, I was excited about it. You know how I told you to spray those leaves, make sure that the bugs don't eat them? I had some old orchard spray, and instead of going out and buying some new stuff, I used that old stuff. And the oil, I guess, something happened to it, and it burned those leaves, oh. and I killed some of those trees <laughs> with that. It just made me sick. <laughs> so now I go and I buy the fresh yeah. stuff, the organic stuff that uh, kills like on contact over 100 insects, you can buy it at Walmart. I've got bottles of it there. Like so spectricide? It's what now? Spectricide? Uh, like no, it's, uh, I'll show you, it's um, green, environmentally friendly stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, the ortho though has like an oil base and it uh -huh. got really hot that one year when I did that. It just made me sick though, but I'm the daddy of that one. So like yeah. I said, you can follow me around feel real good about your tree planting. But if they don't make it, I always say plant more, better genetics later on and learn from it. Mm -hmm. You ain't messing up, you ain't doing nothing. Yeah. That's exactly right. <laughs>